Hello everybody and welcome to Eye Opener. This is Dr. Mridula V. Amarnathir. So today I am going to discuss about a very very important topic which is the tear film. So in this session I will be talking to you about the different layers of the tear film. Okay, then we will move on to dry eyes, the different tests which are done to evaluate dry eyes and finally the management part of it. The tear film also called as the pre-corneal tear film as it lies above the cornea okay, is divided into three layers so the first one is the lipid layer then you have an aqueous layer and then you have a mucin layer so the lipid layer is mainly secreted by the mebomin gland Z's and mole so remember the Z's and the mebomin gland are modified sebaceous gland whereas the mole is a modified sweat gland and what does it function as? it basically helps in the retardation of the evaporation and lubricates the eyelids next layer is the aqueous layer now this layer is mainly secreted by the lacrimal gland it supplies oxygen to the cornea and has an antibacterial function and the last layer is the mucin layer now this is mainly produced by the goblet cells and the glands of Munns some key points which you will have to remember is 1. The pH of the tear film which is 7.4 The volume which is 7 microliters and the rate of formation is 1.2 microliters per minute. So next we will talk about dry eye. Now what is dry eye? It is a multifactorial disease of the tears and the ocular surface. And now that can result in certain symptoms like discomfort, visual disturbances, tear film instability which ultimately leads to the damage of the ocular surface. So like I said, the tear film is from the three layers, lipid, aqueous and mucin. So now when there is a deficiency in any of these layers, it can lead to dryness of the eye. So the first layer that is the lipid layer. Now where do you get deficiency of the lipid layer? One is when there is a mebomin gland dysfunction like in case of posterior blepharitis. Two, when there is a low blink rate like I see in Bell's palsy or if you notice those individuals who work in the laptop for a very very long hours, what happens is their blink rate is also very low. So what happens there is a little deficiency of the lipid layer which can lead to dryness of the eyes and also among contact lens wearers. Next is you have the aqueous deficiency. Now in this you have Jogren's syndrome as in keratoconjunctivitis sicca and also in non-Jogren's conditions like in case of lacrimal gland disorders. And the third one is the mucin layer. So again deficiency of this layer. Now remember this layer is close to the cornea or the conjunctiva. So certain conditions like say trachoma, chemical burns, Steven Johnson syndrome, pemphigoid can again lead to dryness of the eyes. Now the tests which are done to evaluate dry eye is a very very important topic which you will have to remember. Shimmer's test. Now in this test what do you do? You take a filter paper, a Watsman filter paper number 41. Now this filter paper is around 5 mm wide and 35 mm long and you insert it into the lower fornix and you wait for 5 minutes. Now after 5 minutes you look at the reading. Now if the reading is less than 10 mm, that means it is a case of dry eye. Now this test also indicates one more thing, that there is a deficiency of the aqueous layer. That is important. Okay, the next is the tear breakup time. So now in this test, you take a 2% fluorescence dye and then install it in the lower fornix and examine it under cobalt blue light. The patient is asked to blink several times. Now T but is that it's a time interval between the last blink and the appearance of the first dry spot on the cornea. Now, if there is no mucin layer in the tear film, what happens? The tear tends to break up faster. Okay. Now if this tear breakup time is less than 10 seconds, that means it is a case of mucin deficiency. So the other tests which are done is one is the phenol red thread test. So now here you take a thread impregnated with phenol dye. Okay, and then what happens is the color changes from yellow to red in the tears. 
that is one important test mcqs have come from this part and then also the tear meniscus height so the tear meniscus height basically decreases in cases of dry eyes and also the tear lysosome levels that also decreases in cases of dry eyes so in, now the final thing is the treatment part now what do we do we mainly give them tear substitutes so you must have seen as right we give them uh, refresh tears tear naturals so what do they contain they mainly contain carboxy methyl cellulose or hydroxy propyl methyl cellulose polyvinyl alcohol or hyaluronic acid sometimes some patients they do not improve to a great extent even with these tear substitutes so then for them we try at punctal plugs when we try to reduce the drainage and preserve the natural tears and in severe form of dry eyes we try out tarsal ruffing so with that we come to an end of the session hope you all liked it thank you and have a great day bye bye